Hello, Kaylee. I have a customer here I'd like for you to help set up on our e-account. It's Tim Taylor from Bennington Tools. Great. So real quick, my name is Kaylee Holloway. I'm the key account representative here at Hoffman Group USA. Uh, we'll be going over today how to register as a new customer. So the first thing we want to do is on your computer desktop or your laptop, you want to go ahead and open up the Internet browser. Um, we support all the major browsers, um, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox. Uh, today we're actually going to be using Microsoft Edge. So you'll go ahead and open up your Internet browser and you want to go ahead and navigate to the Hoffman Group uh, website. The URL is www.hoffman-group.com and that's Hoffman with two F's and two N's. You don't actually have to type in the slash US slash EN or slash HUS, that will automatically populate. So just remember the www.hoffman-group.com. Once you enter in the URL, you'll see that it navigates you to our main page of our website. You see the Hoffman Group logo up at the top, a big search bar where you can search for our items, and then of course there's lots of links to check out our product portfolio. Today, since we're talking about new customer registration, what you want to do is actually navigate to the top right hand side of the page. You'll see a little user icon and where it says sign in. Click this button. It's going to open up a menu from the right hand side where you have the option to enter in existing credentials if you're already a registered customer or in this case down here where it says are you a new customer, we're going to click the join now link. That link is going to bring us to this page where we've got a couple of options. So in this case, we have my company as a new customer. This is for customers that the company's never dealt with Hoffman or you've never registered before. The second option is my company is already a customer and needs eShop access. If your company already partners with Hoffman, but maybe you're new in your role, new to the company, or it's the first time you're actually working with Hoffman, you'll still want to select the top option. This option is more for a company that has an administrative eShop user that has the ability to add users to the platform, but it only works if you really know who those users are within your organization. If you don't, it can be kind of frustrating because your colleagues may or may not have the access, so you'll want to use this one. The last option, real quick, is if your company is already a customer, but you don't know your username and password. This third option is going to help you get those credentials or reset your password for you to gain access. So let's review here. So basically, we always want to use the my company as a new customer to expedite this process because we may not know who the administrator is. So if we do know we have an account with Hoffman, we want to set up with my company. Uh, if we lose our password or we can't remember it or log in, we've used the third choice. Exactly. Yeah, this top option, the form that will populate is really easy to use. It's very fast and it still gets you the same results as the second option. So I always recommend using the first option, my company as a new customer. You got that, Tim? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and click the first one and then click the continue button. Now it's going to ask us for our company details. What we're going to look for here is to type in your company's name. So our company in this case is Binford Tools in Knoxville, Tennessee. As you can see, when I search for the company name, I've got some matches that populate that are pretty close to what I've typed in. However, if I look at the options here, Knoxville, Tennessee is not one of the options. So what I'll actually do is come down here to the orange link and click this to create my company manually. Now, if I just so happen to see my company with the correct address listed, you can go ahead and select that one and that should populate the information for you on the registration form. But again, since my company doesn't exist, we're gonna go ahead and create it manually. This what, is if bring my us company, what if the company exists and it's a different location? We'll still wanna to select to create it manually. So you may have cases that you know you have a large company that has different facilities across the United States, you'll still want to make sure that for, if your address does not exist to create it manually. 
So what we're going to do is go through and we're going to go ahead and fill out all of the fields. Make sure that you list the accurate company address. The address line one, this is more specifically for if you have a specific dock or if there's multiple buildings at one site, which building you want things to be delivered to. And then your so street this, address, go ahead. This, this is a building address, not a delivery address. Actually, you are correct. So this should be the main address or billing address for your company. If your delivery address or shipping address is separate from your billing address, so there's a different address, you'll actually come down here and select that the delivery address is different. This will actually bring up other fields. We can see that here. It'll bring up other fields for you to enter in your shipping address for where you want your tools to be delivered to. But if your shipping address is the same as your billing address, you just need to use the top section. Then of course for postcode, you wanna enter in your zip code. And then where it says town and county, really this is just your city and state. So I will enter in Knoxville comma TN. Now real quick, your address line one and address line two, as I said, address line one is more specifically about if there's a specific location within your facility. So if your facility is really big and you have a specific dock or a specific building that it needs to go to, you can put that here. For address line two, a lot of our customers, if needed, will put an attention to. Maybe there's somebody specific in shipping and receiving responsible for bringing in deliveries. You can put them here. You can put yourself. Other customers just leave this blank. Then lastly, you'll enter in your VAT number. What if you don't have a VAT number or you don't know it? That's totally fine. This is not a required field. The VAT number or your value added tax some people know it. Usually it's like your purchasing department that may know that number and they'll add it in there. But if you don't know it, that's totally fine. You don't have to enter it. We just move forward. So since everything is entered, we'll go ahead and click the continue button. Now, from the information that we entered, you can actually see the information above here. If you happen to notice after you move forward that something seems off, you just come over to change details. You click this link, it'll bring you back to those fields to be able to edit them. But one thing you can also see here is that since we've entered all the appropriate fields, you have this nice green check over here that lets you know it's okay to proceed. So now we're in the personal details section. In this section, you, who's the contact that's registering, will need to enter in your information. In this case, this is gonna be Tim's information. If you have a fax number, go ahead and enter that. Of course, you want your work email here. And then of course, the department you work in. In this case, Tim's in the quality department. All of this information allows us to be able to reach you in the event that we have a question or a concern regarding your order. Sometimes if it's the main telephone number that you list, it's easier for us to reference, you know, I need to reach Mr. Tim Taylor in the quality department at this company. And then usually we can have somebody route us to you to be able to get those questions answered. And again, once all your fields are entered, go ahead and click the continue button. Now we're in the declaration of trade compliance. This is just a fancy way of saying, what industry does your company associate with? We have a bunch of pre-populated options, but in the event that none of these quite fit your company, you can come down to this field and manually enter it. In this case, for Binford Tools, we're gonna select Tool and Die Making. Then you'll wanna select the type of customer you are. Most of the time for our customers, they're gonna select the end customers. There are a few companies that Hoffman partners with that are resellers, and so they'll select that option, but for the majority of our customers, end customer is the correct choice. You're also welcome to enter in the website URL for your company, but again, it's not a required field, so you don't have to. Then we also want to select how you heard about Hoffman. We're always interested to see how new customers get referred to us, so you know, it may have been an industry event, maybe our 
sales representative was in your area, or maybe you follow us on social media. Um, in this case, I know that uh, we were checking out the Instagram post from Hoffman Quality Tools, so we're going to go ahead and select social media. Then lastly, you want to go through all of the legal disclaimers here. Once you do and you acknowledge them, you just go ahead and click this little box. Again, once all of this is filled out, you can click continue. Now the last part of registration is being able to set up a username and password. The key here is to make sure that you use something that you know you'll remember, but also once you set the, your username and password, make sure you write it down so you don't forget. So we'll go ahead and set a username. And then the password, when we move down to this field, you'll actually see this little box populate that lets you know what our password requirements are. As you can see next to each of these requirements, there's a red X. As you enter in your password, they'll change to a green check showing that you've met that requirement. Now, if you're unsure or want to verify that you've actually spelled everything right in your password or you've keyed it in appropriately, you can select the eye icon at the end of the field. That will take the password and remove it from the stars and put the actual words in there so you can see what it is. And then you can compare to make sure you've entered in the correct information. Now, Kelly, I've noticed something that you did all lowercase on your username. Is that important? It is. So when you do your, your username, you do want to leave everything in lowercase um, letters. If you do uppercase, the system is going to provide you an error and have you go back in and redo it. So make sure you do enter in, in, in all lowercase. That's a good catch. But the password, we do want a mix of uppercase, lowercase um, letters and numbers, as you saw in the requirements. Another question, I guess, that you sure. should write this down right now, maybe, and put it somewhere? Yes, it's very important. Of course, you know, if you happen to forget the username and password, you can always start back over at the beginning like we discussed, go back into uh, registering as a new customer, and then select that you forgot your credentials. And then we can always help you regain the username and or password. But it's usually helpful to maybe write down your username and password beforehand, maybe slip it underneath your keyboard on a post-it, and then you can save it for later. About how long will it take for him here to get his pricing and his login and everything taken care of so you sure. can see his great value he's going to receive from the Hoffman group. So I'll quickly show you this. Once we have everything filled out in the registration form, we're going to click execute registration. You'll see that the website's going to think for a little bit. It's going to take all of that information and process it, and then it's going to bring you to this page. You will automatically already be logged into your account. However, what happens is our customer service team is going to receive a notification of your registration. They're going to go in, in the back end of our servers and they're going to finish building your account and hooking up the correct pricing. Usually you see the correct pricing pretty quickly, maybe even within an hour. However, sometimes depending on the workload, it may take up to 24 hours to see the correct pricing show up in your account. So just bear that in mind. If you ever have any questions on if your correct pricing is showing or there seems to be a discrepancy, or you think there is, you can certainly reach out to our customer service team and they can verify that information.